హలో వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై ఛానల్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ యువర్ వండర్ఫుల్ సపోర్ట్ ఫర్ నైన్త్ స్టాండర్డ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం సోషల్ సైన్స్ క్లాసెస్ ఫర్ దట్ ఇన్స్పిరేషన్ అండ్ యువర్ సపోర్ట్ నవ్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు స్టార్ట్ ఎయిత్ స్టాండర్డ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం సోషల్ సైన్స్ క్లాసెస్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఎయిత్ స్టాండర్డ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ మీడియం సోషల్ సైన్స్ క్లాసెస్ ద ఫస్ట్ క్లాస్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ దట్ ఈస్ జియాగ్రఫి చాప్టర్ నెంబర్ వన్ ద అర్త్ అవర్ లివింగ్ ప్లానెట్ సో లెట్స్ కమ్ టు ది యూ విల్ గెట్ మోర్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ద లెసన్ ద అర్త్ అవర్ లివింగ్ ప్లానెట్ సో వాట్ ఆర్ ద వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్స్ టు బీ వీ క్యాన్ గెట్ ఫ్రమ్ ద లెసన్ అవర్ అర్త్ లివింగ్ ప్లానెట్ very important learning points to be from this lesson are names of the earth the size of the earth and distribution of water on it continents and oceans of the world latitudes and longitudes time local time standard time and international date time oceans and continents on the world map so these are the very important learning points to be learned from the lesson the earth our living planet so let's come to the do you know where we are living yes exactly we are living on the earth the earth is third planet from the sun so we can watch the video we can identify where exactly the earth is located the earth is the home for all forms of life like plants animals and human beings so what are the reasons for the living beings survive on this earth so living creatures are living on this earth what is the reasons so the reasons are mainly suitable distance from the sun so what we are uh, receiving the distance that is distance between sun and earth that is exactly the distance between the suitable between sun and earth and then range of temperature so we are receiving the temperature that is also one of the major reason for the survival on the living creatures then life supporting gases either it is a oxygen either it is a nitrogen either it is a carbon dioxide because oxygen is called as the life supporting gas so nitrogen is also plays a very important role with maximum percentage carbon dioxide is also very essential for plants preparing their own food and then atmosphere on the earth water cycle so these are we recognized as the major reasons for the survival of living creatures on this earth and earth is called by many names so it is calling as living planet unique planet watery planet blue planet living planet because of all the living creatures the only planet among the solar system the living creatures are exist on this earth that is the reason it is called as living planet and unique planet because of suitable temperature life supporting gases and needs to be the atmosphere those are all available only in this earth that is the reason it is called as unique planet and watery planet because of no other planets in the solar system that does not have water the earth is only contains the water that is the reason it is called as watery planet and blue planet because of now you are looking the picture that is where the water is available it's look in a blue in color that is the reason it is called as blue planet 
and the size of the earth when it comes to the part of what is the size of the earth the earth is the fifth largest planet in the sun's family in the solar system earth is the fifth largest planet in sun's family and the diameter of the earth is approximately four time greater than the moon so now you can see that uh, the uh, approximately it is a four times greater than the moon and around it is 107 times less than the sun 107 times less than the sun so that is the size of the earth and the next um, the earth's shape what is the shape of the earth the shape of the earth often described as geod geod is the shape of the earth which means earth shaped or oblate spheroid oblate spheroid or earth shaped that means of geod and whereas you can identify the two poles north pole and south pole the earth is flattened at the poles and bulged in the equator that is flattened in the poles north pole and south pole whereas east to west it is bulges of the equator side when comes to the distribution of land and water bodies the total geographical area of the earth is 510 million square kilometer the total geographical area of the earth is 510 million square kilometers whereas 361 million square kilometer that means 70.78 percent is the area covered by water then 149 million square kilometer that means 29.22 percent is covered by land the earth has unequal distribution land and water it is not equally distributed land and water so the ratio between the land and water bodies is 1 east 2.4 3 that is the ratio of land and water bodies on the earth when the diameter the diameter of the earth so the diameter of the earth when it is calculated the equatorial diameter of the earth is 12756 kilometer whereas the polar diameter is 12714 kilometers and the uh, equatorial circumference is 40076 kilometers whereas polar circumference is 40008 kilometers the difference between of 42 kilometers in the diameter is the proof for the regarding the geod shape of the earth so that's as polar side north pole and the south pole whereas towards the uh, equatorial it has been bulgous and towards the north pole and south pole it has been uh, little fattened that is the extra 42 kilometer that is we regarded as the geod shape of the earth so let's come to the the continents the land bodies of the earth are known as the continents among that anyhow you are familiar the continents are asia africa north america south america antarctica europe and australia so these are the seven continents among that asia is the largest continent Australia is the smallest continent and then 
the water bodies on the earth. So, how the water bodies are uh, we can see on the earth. So, before that what are water bodies? The large water bodies on the earth are called oceans. There are four major oceans. So, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, then Arctic Ocean. So, the, these are the four major oceans. Among that, the Pacific Ocean is the largest and deepest ocean. And Arctic Ocean is considered as the smallest and shallowest of the uh, oceans among the water bodies. Okay? So, this is about the water bodies. Whereas, the land and water bodies are unevenly distributed between the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. So, among that, let us come to the, the northern hemisphere. Now, you can see in the picture, the northern hemisphere has 60 percent of land and 40 percent of water. Therefore, it is called land hemisphere. It is called as land hemisphere because of it contains 60 percent of land, 40 percent of water. That is the reason it is called as land hemisphere. Whereas, the southern hemisphere, on the other hand, so 81 percent of water and 19 percent of land, it is covered in southern hemisphere. That is the reason southern hemisphere is called as water hemisphere. Okay, so this is uh, today's class. In this class, we get the information about the different names of the earth and the size of the earth and uh, very important continents and uh, the size of the earth and uh, um, water bodies on the earth. In the upcoming class, we will going to get the more information. Thank you. Thank you very much. Until keep watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.